Let's get right into it. Number 8. The Trunk Release Handle That glowing handle in your car's trunk exists because of some really dark stories. Back in the 1990s, getting trapped in a car trunk was basically a death sentence. You'd either cook alive in the summer heat, freeze to death in winter, or slowly suffocate, and it happened way more often than you'd think. Kids would play hide-and-seek in the worst possible spots, or criminals would force people into trunks during kidnappings. Once that trunk slammed shut, you were pretty much done for. In 1995, Jeanette Fennell and her husband were coming home one night in San Francisco. Two guys with guns forced them into their car trunk at gunpoint. The criminals drove them around, robbed them, and left them trapped in the trunk. Jeanette started feeling around in the dark. She found a cable that, when pulled really hard, popped the trunk open. It was pure luck. That cable wasn't meant to be a release handle. After surviving, Jeanette started investigating trunk entrapment cases. Hundreds of people had suffocated or baked to death in car trunks. Many of them were kids who accidentally locked themselves in while playing. In the summer of 1998 alone, 11 children died in car trunks during a heat wave. The car companies fought back against adding release handles, saying it would cost too much. That too much was between 20 cents and $4 per car. In 2001, the government made trunk release handles mandatory in all new cars. That little glowing handle has saved countless lives. It exists because people died horrible deaths, and one angry survivor wouldn't take no for an answer. Number 7. The Dead Man's Switch Imagine you're driving a train in the 1800s. You're chugging along, carrying hundreds of passengers, when suddenly you have a heart attack. Your lifeless hand falls off the controls, but the train keeps going. There's no one else in the driver's cabin. You've just turned into a ghost train, barreling down the tracks at full speed. This exact scenario happened way too many times in the early days of trains. Engineers would have heart attacks, strokes, or even fall asleep, and their trains would keep on rolling. Sometimes these ghost trains would crash into other trains. Other times they'd derail at high speeds, turning into a twisted mess of metal and screaming passengers. The solution was the dead man's switch. The train driver has to keep constant pressure on a pedal or lever. If they let go for any reason, the train automatically stops. In 1918, a horrible crash happened in Brooklyn. A train operator had a seizure. His hand slipped off the controls, and the train derailed on a curve. 97 people died that day. It was one of the worst train accidents in American history. After that, dead man's switches became mandatory on all trains. Train operators would try to outsmart the system. They'd stick a broom handle in the lever or tie it down with rope so they could take a nap. Railway companies had to keep making the switches more complicated. Modern versions require random actions at random times. If you don't play along, the train stops. Today, dead man switches are everywhere. That lawnmower you're riding stops when you get off the seat. Even Tesla cars have a version of it, forcing you to touch the steering wheel every few seconds while on autopilot. Number 6. Oval Aircraft Windows the oval windows on airplanes exist because in 1954, three planes literally exploded mid-flight, turning into confetti at 30,000 feet. These planes were called the de Havilland Comet, the world's first commercial jet airliners. They were beautiful machines, super advanced for their time, with one tiny problem. They kept breaking apart in mid-air. The windows on these planes were square. Corners are really bad at handling stress. Think about when you tear a piece of paper. You always start at a corner because that's where it's weakest. Now imagine that same principle, but with a metal tube flying through the air at 500 miles per hour. Every time the plane went up, the cabin would pressurize, making these corners flex slightly. Then when the plane landed, they'd flex back. Up. Down. Up. Down. Like bending a paperclip back and forth until it snaps. Eventually, these corners would develop microscopic cracks. At 30,000 feet, where the air pressure outside is a third of what it is at sea level, these tiny cracks were devastating. The whole plane would tear apart like a tin can in a blender. The first comet exploded over India, the second one over the Mediterranean, the third followed the same fate. Investigators built a giant water tank and repeatedly pressurized and depressurized a comet fuselage until it failed. That's when they discovered the problem with the corners. The solution was to make everything curved. Oval windows distribute stress evenly around their edges like an arch in architecture. No corners means no weak points. No weak points means no exploding planes. Number 5. The Hyatt Regency Walkway Collapse The Hyatt Hotel had fancy suspended walkways, like floating bridges inside the hotel. The original design was like a stack of paper clips hanging from one long string. 
but during construction, someone changed it to hanging paper clips from other paper clips. The engineers who approved this change didn't do the math right, and in engineering, bad math equals dead people. On July 17, 1981, during a dance party at the hotel, the walkways were packed with people. The top walkway suddenly gave way, crashing onto the walkway below. Both then crashed onto the crowded lobby floor. 114 people died that day. Even the original design wasn't strong enough. This disaster changed everything about how we build things today. Now, when engineers want to change something in a design, they need multiple people to check their math. Every time you see multiple signatures on a construction document, that's because 114 people died at the Hyatt Regency. Number 4. The Radium Girls and Modern Workplace Safety Back in the 1920s, women worked in factories painting watch dials with radium paint to make them glow in the dark. The company told them the paint was totally safe. They even said it was good for you, like a radioactive vitamin shake. The painters used a technique called lip pointing, where they'd put the brush between their lips to get a finer point. Each time they did this, they swallowed a little bit of radium, and radium has a half-life of 1,600 years. Once it gets in your body, it's there forever, constantly irradiating you from the inside. Their teeth started falling out. Their jaws literally crumbled away. Some girls' bones would break just from walking upstairs. Others developed massive tumors that would glow in the dark. When they tried to sue the company, the company simply delayed the court cases until the women died. But the few survivors kept fighting. They showed up to court in such bad shape that some had to be carried in on stretchers. The public was outraged when they learned what happened. This led to some of the first workplace safety laws in America. The company knew radium was dangerous the whole time. The scientists who worked with radium used lead shields, tongs, and masks. But they decided protective gear for the girls would be too expensive. After all, they were just factory workers. Number 3. The Titanic's Missing Lifeboats The Titanic could carry about 3,300 people, but only had lifeboats for 1,178. That's like having a fire escape that only goes halfway down the building. Back then, the number of lifeboats required was based on a ship's tonnage, not passenger count. These rules were written when ships were way smaller, but nobody updated them. It's like using your great-grandpa's pants size to buy your clothes. The ship's designers actually planned for more lifeboats initially, but they thought too many lifeboats would make the deck look cluttered. They chose aesthetics over survival. That's like removing your car's airbags because they don't match the interior. The ship's owners were so confident in their unsinkable design that they saw lifeboats as decoration. Over 1,500 people died when the ship sank many because there weren't enough lifeboats. This disaster led to the creation of Solus, the Safety of Life at Sea Convention. Now ships must have enough lifeboats for everyone on board, plus extra inflatable rafts. They created the International Ice Patrol to track icebergs. Ships now need 24-hour radio watches too. The Titanic's radio operator was off-duty when nearby ships tried to warn them about ice. That's like turning off your phone's tornado alerts because you're trying to take a nap. Number 2. Modern School Bus Design Back in the early 1900s, kids were riding to school in wooden boxes on wheels. These early school buses were just regular trucks with some benches thrown in the back. When these things crashed, they'd splinter into pieces like a poorly built IKEA cabinet. The death toll got so bad that in 1939, they held a national conference. Engineers gathered to study horrible accidents and figure out how to stop kids from dying on their way to math class. That's when they created the tank-like design we see today. Those high-backed, closely-spaced seats are called compartmentalization. It's like egg cartons, but for children. If the bus crashes or flips, kids bounce around in their little compartments instead of flying through the windows. The windows are designed to pop out easily because there used to be a time when kids couldn't escape burning buses. That iconic yellow color is actually the most visible color in bad weather and dawn or dusk conditions. They picked it after too many cars plowed into school buses they couldn't see in time. The automatic stop sign that folds out was added after kids kept getting hit by cars while crossing. Modern school buses are basically rolling monuments to every kid who didn't make it to school. They're the safest vehicle on the road, but only because they used to be the deadliest. Number 1. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire and Exit Signs Those glowing exit signs in every building exist because 146 people died in one of the most horrific workplace disasters in history. On March 25, 1911, in New York City, the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory was a sweatshop where hundreds of young women, mostly immigrants, made clothes. The owners had locked most of the exit doors to prevent workers from stealing fabric. 
When a fire started in a scrap bin, the flames spread rapidly. Workers rushed to the exits, only to find them locked. They were trapped in a burning building, desperately pulling on doors that wouldn't budge. The fire escape collapsed under the weight of escaping people. The elevator could only make four trips before the heat warped the shaft. Workers faced a terrible choice, burn alive or jump. People on the street watched as young women began leaping from the ninth floor. The firefighters' ladders only reached the sixth floor. Their nets ripped when multiple people jumped at once. Bodies hit the sidewalk with such force that they splintered the concrete. One witness said, I learned a new sound that day, the sound of a body hitting the pavement. That sound repeated 62 times in less than 10 minutes. The factory owners survived by escaping to another building from the roof. They were tried for manslaughter and found not guilty because the jury couldn't prove they knew the doors were locked. This disaster led New York State to create workplace safety laws. Buildings now require multiple unlocked exits during work hours and regularly tested fire escapes. Modern exit signs have backup batteries, use red color visible through smoke, and are placed low on walls because smoke rises. Those 146 people died horrible deaths, so we could have something we take for granted today. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.